Okay, here is our question. Let's imagine we are working for a fairground company and we have a new ride. People are put up here in this rather heavy capsule and it's swung around in circles, accompanied by much screaming, no doubt. Um, the company are worried that the bolts connecting this big, heavy people holding capsule to the bar that holds it in place might break. It's most likely to break when it's at the bottom of its swing, because at that point you have to support a lot of centri um, there'll be a lot of centripetal force needed to hold it in place. So the question is, how much force will these bolts need to sustain? Now the ride is designed that when it's at the top, it's almost stationary. So the question is, as the thing swings down from the top to the bottom, how fast will it be going here, and therefore what force is needed? To hold it in place. Okay, so that's our question. How are we going to go about solving this? All we're really interested in is the speed at the bottom. We're not interested in how long it takes to get there, so that sounds like an energy sort of problem to me. Um, in this case, we can't just take potential energy and turn it into kinetic energy because we could do that if this support was weightless, but the support actually has quite a bit of weight. And this bit's going to be moving much faster than that bit moving and that bit's not moving at all. So we're in a situation where we've got all sorts of different bits of this beam moving at different speeds, which means it's really hard to calculate. However, this whole thing here would all be moving at the same angular speed omega so it looks like rotational is the way to go, rotational energy. So we're going to have an equation that looks something like a potential energy to begin with goes to half i omega squared, which is the rotational energy. In this case, um, we have to measure the moment of inertia about the hinge. We have a fixed hinge, so we don't need to break it up into um, motion and rotation. Everything can be rotation because the hinge is fixed. Okay, so um, what are we going to need to know? We're going to need to work out the moment of inertia and the change in potential energy. Now, the change in potential energy, this beam here with mass m1 is going to go from a height of r over 2 above to r over 2 below, so the change is going to be, that's the total of r, so m1 g r. On the other hand, the people holding capsule up here is going to move from height of plus r to minus r, so we've got plus m2 g times 2 r. Okay, so that's the potential energy change. Now, what's the moment of inertia? Well, there are two parts of the moment of inertia here. There is the moment of inertia of the people holding capsule, and that's pretty simple because we can approximate this being a single point, a distance r from the center. So for single points, the moment of inertia is just the distance squared times the mass. This beam over here is a bit more difficult However, we worked out in lectures that the moment of inertia, I don't need that, the moment of inertia of a, a beam around one end, which was simply 1 over 3 times length squared times its mass. So that gives us the moment of inertia. So we can substitute these into that equation. And we get that m1gr plus m2g times 2r equals half i, which is, oops, I made a mistake up there, that is equals, it's plus. We've got the moment of inertia of the beam and of the capsule, so we have to add them together. So they've both got r squared in them, so we might bring the r squared outside. So it's m2 plus 
m1 over 3. So that's half i, we need an omega squared here. Yep, and there's a 1 over 2 there, so that all works. So let's rearrange this. We end up that omega squared is going to be this divided by that. So it's going to be, so we've got to take the g r outside, m1 plus 2m2. Over here we've got divide by that, which is like put, put the 2 up on this side. So we've got r squared m2 plus m1 over 3 equals omega squared. And we can cancel one power of r there. OK, so that's all good as far as it goes. But now we need, that will tell us the angular speed down at the bottom here. But we don't need the angular speed. What we want to work out is the force needed to balance it when it's there. So let's rub out all this. So we've got more space to write. So when the capsule is at the bottom of its arc, travelling at speed v, which is an angular speed of omega, it's going to need to be a net centripetal force upwards of mv squared over r, but there's also going to be a gravitational force of m, in this case it's m of the capsule, so it's m2, um, g downwards. So the net tension force upwards, which is the force the bolts will have to sustain, is going to be m2 v squared over r minus g. Now, it's got an angular speed dub omega. How does that convert into the linear speed v? Well, if you remember, it's simply that v equals omega r. So we get that the tension is going to be m2. Um, now, so v squared, so therefore v squared equals omega squared r squared. So this is going to be omega squared r. We've already got omega squared down here, so it's going to be that times r. It means we get rid of the r on the bottom, so it's going to be 2g m1 plus 2m2, we've got rid of the r, 1 over m2 plus m1 over 3 minus g. And we can simplify that, I guess, but there's probably no real great need to. Let's check it a bit. Uh, units. We can get rid of the G's inside here, put them outside. So you've got an MG on the outside. MG has dimensions of force, so force equals force, that's good. Everything inside is a constant mass over mass. So that has no dimensions, mass over mass, so that all checks. Um, so it all looks plausible, and that's the strength the bolts will have to sustain.